Hi guys, it's me Chazar HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today we are going to be doing for the first time in a few weeks We're going to be previewing a race in 2019 We're previewing the first race after the summer break has finished of course the 2019 Belgian Grand Prix at Spa We cannot wait for it because of course the last four races in Formula 1 have been so great And Spa, I know last year wasn't great but most of the time Spa does provide classic moments, great racing and close racing as well so i cannot wait for spine i'm sure you guys cannot wait either but of course along with me as always is my podcast guest as always nib and he is of course excited as well for the belgian grand prix and nib um yeah are you pumped up now that we've had that break yes i certainly felt like after the four well quite honestly ridiculous races we had in a row i just felt as if i needed a break but uh not this much of a break, if I'm perfectly honest. I wish we were back already this weekend, uh, but no, nope, we've got to wait another week until the for, until the Belgium Grand Prix, and I certainly am looking forward to it. it. Just feels as if something's been missing on a on a weekend, even though there are other sports back, you know. So I'll be certainly very happy that uh, F1 will be back next weekend. Absolutely, and let's just go straight into this preview, of course, of the teams. Now, starting off with the championship leaders, Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton, all of that. Um, Mercedes, coming into this race, I think are looking good in terms of the track layout and how it will suit the car. In the first and third sector, I don't think they'll have the best car, and they'll go to Ferrari because of sheer power. But because of the middle sector and being as long as it is, I think Mercedes, even if they ha don't have the fastest car, they're still going to be good. Uh, again, because of that middle sector. But if you look at their history at Spa, it's very good. Lewis Hamilton is very, very good at Spa. Certainly uh, is better than Valtteri Bottas at this circuit. So I think for Lewis Hamilton, you can expect him to be in the top two or even at worst P3. Here at Spa for this Grand Prix. For Valtteri Bottas, he'll be in there, but I don't think he'll quite be, say, in a podium type position. But for the team, I think they'll have a good car. They'll definitely be able to go for pole position, the race win in the dry. Again, even if they don't necessarily have the quickest car on the straights, I still think they'll have a very good car, again, to go for pole in the race win. Um, but yeah, I think they are still looking definitely very good. Nib for this team, Mercedes, of course, after they, a couple races before the summer break, they did have a couple difficult races and races where they were really pushed hard by teams like Red Bull and at times Ferrari, if we go back to Austria. Do you think they'll be under serious threat again or do you think they'll bounce back big time and you know completely obliterate the field? Um, I don't think they'll completely obliterate the field because, as you mentioned, it isn't absolutely the best track possible for them. Um, you know, the car, I was, as we've discussed millions of times, their car is the best in medium and slow speed corners. and aren't too many medium and slow speed corners at Spa, especially with these types of uh, these types of F1 cars. Maybe if we're back in the, maybe back in 2012 around there, or something like that might maybe suit Mercedes a little bit even more uh, this track but yeah you know Mercedes still ultimately have a good engine um, compared to Ferrari in the race in qualifying it's very different um, I, I do expect Mercedes to, to be strong though even though I expect other teams to perform very well next weekend I, I'll say it again and I'm going to be very boring you can't go past Mercedes as the winner, you know. I, I think that Mercedes will, will probably have a difficult qualifying. And when I say difficult, maybe not get a front row lockout. Um, and then I think they ultimately will win the race because they, they just perform better in the race than than everyone else. Or, well, maybe except for Max Verstappen. But, you know, it's a uh, Mercedes... I, I I think they'll have a very good uh, Belgium Grand Prix, and I think it'll be um, a little bit better than what they have done um, just before the, the summer break. But I want to mention something about Valtteri Bottas. In the first half of the season, very often he has performed very well just to make well, once he, so, he, so he could secure his contract for the next season. 
But then in the second half of the season, noticeably from like the summer break, his performance had, performances had notably dipped. Also in previous years, it had been noticed that Hamilton's performance had increased around about this time. So it'll be interesting to see if Bottas um, is able to perform better. And then if he does perform better here at, at our Spa, then uh, who knows? He could actually have qu- quite a good second half of the season. Yeah, hopefully Valtteri does. And hopefully, from a Mercedes point of view, that they don't tell Valtteri their decision until, you know, as late as they can. Because I think with Valtteri, once he knows he's secure for another year, I think he does definitely tone down the amount of performance he has. Because I don't think it's really a coincidence that when he is confirmed to be in that team, that his performances don't get really any better. So hopefully Bottas is... You know, doing well at Spa, but I think definitely, of course, their main contender is going to be Lewis Hamilton. But in terms of qualifying, if it is dry and at Spa, dry weather is not that uh, common at times. Ferrari should have the best car in qualifying for sure, because on the straights, Ferrari are gaining almost half a second. Only in qualifying, though, because... It seems as though with their power unit, they can't run it as powerful as they want to or as they do at times in qualifying. So if Ferrari are going to win the race, they have to get pole or at least they have to be leading the race by the end of lap one. Because I don't see Ferrari being able to keep up in the race in the middle sector to a Mercedes ahead or even a Red Bull ahead because in the middle sector they won't have enough grip and because of how poor they you know look after their tyres they just won't have the grip to you know compete with Hamilton maybe Bottas or or even Max Verstappen if the Red Bull car and Verstappen is good in Spa so for Ferrari if they're gonna win they've got to get the job done in qualifying they've got to get at the very least pole position and lead at the end of the first lap of the race If they don't do that, I don't see them winning. I I don't think they will win because I don't think actually in qualifying, despite them having a good car, which I think they will have, I don't think they're going to produce the type of pace they should. I think they'll somehow bottle it again in qualifying, leading to another missed opportunity for them. So, you know, if Ferrari, if they're going to prove me wrong and actually win... And that's what they need to do. They've got to get pole position. Pole position isn't always critical here, but considering how quick their car is going to be on the straights, they've got to do it. They absolutely have to do it. Nib, do you agree? Do you think Ferrari absolutely have to get pole lead at the end of the first lap in the race to win? Well, as we've seen for many years now, it's spot pole, as you just mentioned, isn't exactly crucial because... If you're in second and able to get the slipstream all the way down um, the straight, you usually end up in first. You know, we I remember a couple of years back, we it was Vettel who got past Hamilton at the start there by doing that, and then we nearly seen one of the uh, the force Indias at the time in the in the lead. Um, somehow, as they were absolutely flying behind, so anything can happen at the start. But yeah, Ferrari want to have secure the best chance of them winning. They need to lock out the front row, absolutely. But who knows with Ferrari, you know, in Austria, and then, of course, the last couple of races have had issues in qualifying uh, with their engine and with other things on the car. But, you know, it, it'd be nice to see if Ferrari didn't have issues, just had a smooth qualifying and got, got the results that they should potentially get. Who knows? They might not have the fast car at, uh, during qualifying at Spa and they might not end up still getting the front the front row lockout so you know ferrari if they they're just if they just get two cars through to q3 and then make sure they can do two laps that that would be good that would be a good start for ferrari and then um but no all, all jokes aside they ferrari should be strong at spa they should be aiming to win and um they they certainly have a very good strong chance to do that and all of that would be helped by a front row lockout Yep, absolutely. And if they do have the type of pace in the first and third sector, which is all about power, if they do have the type of pace that they should do, then I agree they should be on the front row because if they are, say, three or four tenths quicker around the lap, they've got to get a front row or at the very least pole position. If Ferrari don't win at Spa, I know Monza is more of a power track, but 
Again, if they can't win at Spa, are they really going to win at Monza? We'll see, though, of course. Uh, next up, though, is Red Bull. Now, for Max Verstappen, of course, it's probably his closest race to home. I think it is. I think it's probably his it is. biggest home race. Yes, it is. It's his biggest home race, closest home race. So, you know, the Verstappen army will be out very, very strong at Spa. I'm sure Max will be great. He normally is very good at Spa. So he will be there to capitalize in the race for sure on Ferrari or a Mercedes messing up or not getting the type of run, you know, on the first lap that they should. I think Max will be in that Red Bull car, still in a podium position in the Grand Prix. I don't think in qualifying Red Bull are going to be that good. I would be surprised if Red Bull got a car onto the second row, to be honest, but... In the race, I think Max will be maybe not up there for the win, but he'll be, he'll be in there for the podium for sure because I think one of the Ferraris will probably have a struggle during the Grand Prix. Uh, the Red Bull car pace-wise in qualifying because of the power deficit they do have to Mercedes and Ferrari and Honda, again, really the best they're going to get is P5 and P6. Of course, though, for this race, Alexander Albon is making his debut for Red Bull Racing. Now, for me, all he has to do is qualify in the top six and finish in the top six in the race. But in the race, of course, if there's retirements ahead, he must, of course, assume that position. Uh, but as if, you know, the two Ferrari cars, two Mercedes cars and Verstappen finish in the race, then... He has to finish in P6. I, I don't think Alba needs to do a lot at Spa. Again, the Red Bull car is not going to be super good. We, we really need to wait till Singapore to see the Red Bull car in a position to be on the podium for sure or winning the Grand Prix. So at Spa, as long as Alba is in the top six and a lot closer to Max Verstappen than Gasly was, I think that is honestly good enough. Uh, Nib, for Red Bull, Verstappen, how do you think they'll do? And for Alba... What do you think would class as a, a good first weekend? Um, well, for, we'll start off with Alexander Albin, of course. The bare minimum you need to be doing in the Red Bull car is finishing sixth. That That's the absolute bare minimum and not 45,000 seconds off Max Verstappen. Um, you know, Albin needs to be, say, within about, well, okay, just just a nice solid start, you know, getting through to Q3, qualifying ahead of the rest of the midfield, um, you know, being maybe three or four tenths off max, you know, that, that I think that's that's probably the bare minimum. And, you know, we've seen how many times Pierre Gasly didn't meet the bare minimum. Um, so, so we'll see, of course, he's not going to be absolutely flying straight from the start, you know. The Toro Rosso and Red Bull are very different cars. Certainly, there certainly might be a little bit more downforce on the uh, on the Red Bull car. Just just a slight more bit of downforce on that car. But um, you know, I expect I expect Albon to perform pretty pretty well for his first weekend in that car. Um, then on to Max Verstappen. I, I think that um, they'll do pretty reasonably. At if I'm perfectly honest here at the uh, at the at Spa. Um, They've, all, they've actually always been pretty good around here, have Red Bull at Spa. Um, they held the fastest lap record for quite some years. I can't remember if Vettel still has that, actually, from uh, 2010 or 2009. I can't remember what year it was. But uh, Red Bull have always been pretty good around here, and it's mainly because of the middle sector. They, they're usually super, super quick through the middle sector. And I think that with, um, with the Honda engine certainly improving, it's still not absolutely at the best. Uh, best engine on the grid you know it's they're competing with the mercedes uh, we've seen that in hungary but you know it's still it's still not right there um but i think that with it with their increased power that they had certainly compared to last year i think that they will actually challenge um mercedes and ferrari next weekend so you know and, we, and you said that you know we have to kind of wait to singapore to uh see Red Bull be strong again, but I don't think many of us expected Red Bull to be winning in Austria, so who, who knows what can happen if it's very warm in Spa, in, in spa you know, that could throw a curveball into the into the mix, but 
now I, I expect uh, I expect Redfield to be pretty good into album to get off to a to a pretty solid start. Yeah, it's true with um, Red Bull in Austria, who didn't think they'd win. But I think also another thing that is very important to the differences between the cars is because Spa is the longest lap of the calendar, the differences between the cars will be elongated more so than it would be at, say, I don't know, Silverstone or other tracks, maybe like Monza. So... That will help, for example, Ferrari with their power advantage or Red Bull Mercedes with their downforce uh, advantage over um, over Ferrari. So I think that's probably the main reason why I think that with Red Bull is because I think, you know, that difference in power will elongate as the lap goes on. I think Max, though, definitely will be in a, a podium position, you know, around race day, but... If they won at Spa, then, you know, credit to them. It, re real big credit to them. I, I don't think they will, but we'll see, of course. Now on to the midfield. And first off, Renault, the first half of the season was not good. Quite bad, honestly, considering the resources and money they have and everything they have at their disposal compared to teams like Toro Rosso, who they're behind in the constructors. It's unbelievable that they're behind Toro Rosso in the constructors' championship, but... That's the way it is right now. Uh, but for Renault coming into Spa, I'm not expecting really anything. If they can finish in the points, great. But I'm not expecting a wonderful performance or anything. Again, if they finish in the points, then I think that's good enough. They're not expected to be good at Spa. They don't have a good record at Spa. So as long as they do the best they can with what they have, that's all I can really say about Renault. Nib for Renault... Do you really see a points finish for Renault? I'm not sure I do, to be honest. No, I, I don't. Uh, I, I dread moving on to Renault because it just feels, uh, well, with disappointment. Obviously, you know, looking looking back with hindsight, uh, Ricardo, you know, you could be could be winning races in the Red Bull, but oh well. Um, but now with Renault. Yeah, I, I don't see them scoring points, if I'm perfectly honest. You know, the the car is just not good enough in the race. Um, and in qualifying, they struggle to get the best out of it. So, yeah, I, I don't really see that if they, that there's any chance of them uh, scoring points or having a successful weekend. It, it's just the... Uh, it's, it's becoming the reality for I know, you know. Not not making it into Q3, or if they are making it into Q3, they're not scoring points, and they certainly need to be turning that around. Absolutely. Again, it's Renault. It's not Toro Rosso or Racing Point. This is a big manufacturer, and they're performing in a way that maybe Racing Point or Toro Rosso would hope to do it best. It's not good enough by Renault. And yeah, for Spa... I don't really see what they can do in a positive way. If it does rain, then maybe they can do something, because I know Ricardo and Hulkenberg are good wet-weather drivers, but if it doesn't rain, I don't really see what Renault can do at Spa. One team that can do a lot, though, is McLaren, whether it is wet or dry, because they have had, for quite a, a long time now, the best car in the midfield. It feels like they've had the best car in the midfield for the entire season. When actually, if you look back at it, they only had the best car in the midfield until, or from about France up until now. So, you know, great season by McLaren. They're absolutely going to finish P4 on the Constructors. It's been a very good season. Probably their best year in Formula 1 since 2012, I'd say. Definitely, they've got the best feeling in the team ever since that season. Uh, but coming to Spa, yeah, I think in the race and, well, in the dry, really, they're going to have the best car. In the wet, maybe if, you know, if it does rain, maybe a surprise driver comes out of nowhere and gets in there with the McLarens. But I, I honestly see McLaren at Spa dominating the front of the pack because these two drivers are driving so well right now. They both are very good at Spa. And the McLaren car, despite it not being upgraded as much as, say, Racing Point are currently doing, or Alpha, or maybe at times Renault, McLaren, they're not, um, they're not really getting any worse. Now, I've just remembered 
that uh, I think McLaren are going to be taking penalties for Spa. Maybe Spa or Monza, I'm not quite sure where the penalties will come because, of course, Renault are going to bring their new spec of power unit and that will incur penalties for the works team and McLaren. But even if they start from the back, I think they'll still finish in the points because they've got such a quick car. And I think pace-wise, maybe not in position, but pace-wise, they're absolutely going to be at the front of the midfield. And if Albon's not quite getting it done yet, the Red Bull, maybe they can get a top six finish if they're lucky. Nib for McLaren, penalties or not, do you think they'll have the best uh, car in the midfield at Spa? Yeah, for sure. I think penalties or not, McLaren will still be the best team in the midfield. They might not get, you know, seventh or eighth or sixth, who knows what Albon could be like. But, you know, at McLaren, they're quite clearly still have... Still have the the best car in the midfield they've got the probably arguably the two best drivers or two of the two of the better drivers uh in the midfield at the moment i i, I can quite comfortably say though at the moment they do have the best driver in the midfield uh with carlos science his performances this year have been absolutely fantastic and somehow still massively gone underneath the radar so all credit in the world to carlos science or science or heinz or however you want to call him as uh the memes have really uh picked up in the last couple of weeks with uh, carlos science ever since he made them sort of public on his uh on his instagram which was uh, a bit funny to see i must say carlos science really has picked up his banter because i don't remember him this being i don't remember him being this you know happy joy you know banterous um a couple of years back so it's it's very nice to see from uh from carlos um but yeah, I think McLaren will do well. They'll um if they do start from the back, I wouldn't be surprised if they do make their way through and score some points. Um, you know, probably maybe maybe both the drivers more than likely one of them, but who who knows if they do take engine penalties, where only uh, we don't know for sure. But um you know, I, I think that McLaren once again will have a, a very strong weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Again, penalties or not, they're going to be very, very good. We know that for sure. Now, let's get on to the two Ferrari-powered or Ferrari customer teams, Alfa Romeo and Haas. First up, Alfa Romeo. For Alfa, I think they'll be good at Spa. And hopefully for their constructors' fight, hopefully for them, McLaren are taking penalties and also Renoir. Because if that is the case, I honestly can see Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi being very strong in the points if those cars do take penalties at Spa. But even if McLaren don't take penalties at Spa, I think Kimi Raikkonen for sure will be in the top 10. It's Spa. Kimi Raikkonen is 1 million percent going to be in the top 10 in that car. He's so good at Spa. He's won here so many times. I know in the last few years, things haven't qu uh, quite gone his way when he was at Ferrari. But, you know, when he has the luck with him and nothing goes wrong, Kimi is fantastic at Spa. And with the way the car is right now and with, and with the way he is when he, you know, is operating that car, I don't see how Kimi Raikkonen won't be in the top 10 in qualifying in the race. Hopefully, Antonio, if McLaren don't take penalties, hopefully, Antonio, you know, can get into the top 10. Hungary really was a very, very poor performance. I know the car maybe wasn't to his liking, but, you know, when Kimi Raikkonen is up there with Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly in fifth and sixth in the race in Hungary, you've got to be, maybe not right there, but a ninth. 10th, 11th place, not back in 18th and 19th. That That's simply not acceptable, in my opinion. So hopefully he can make progress on that. And for Haas, the other, of course, Ferrari customer team, they are making progress in terms of understanding their issues and what is working better rather than the you know, other parts they have. They are making progress, but I think at Spa... If it isn't, you know, if the qualifying a race is dry, I think, again, they will end up outside the top 10. If it does rain, though, I think they could, they could, they get a couple points with, say, Kevin Magnussen. Uh, but for Haas, I, I think it's too soon for them to be, you know, strong at a racetrack like this. Hopefully they are in qualifying, but in the race, again, I don't think it is quite time for them to be 
strong uh, at Spa. Nib, for Alpha and Haas, first off for Alpha, do you think they'll be as good as they have been in the last few races? And for Haas, as I've said, and maybe you think the same way too, I think for Haas it's probably too soon to say they're going to be absolutely in the points. Yeah, so with Alpha, you know, I don't think you can really say otherwise of them not having a strong weekend. At Hungary, Kimi was uh, very good, and we all know at Spa, Kimi, Kimi is good at Spa. Um, so I only, only, I, I don't see how Kimi doesn't score points. You know, some, who knows, something crazy could happen at Turn One. You know, you know, always got to say that. Um, but you know, Kimi, I'd expect Kimi to score some points. Hopefully, Antonio does have a good performance. Um, you know. Just a couple of poor races. Well, one poor race certainly at um certainly at Hock and uh, not Hockenheim at um at Hungary. I could I couldn't remember. I was getting my H's mixed up there. Hockenheim, Hungary. I didn't didn't know which one I wanted to say, but a, a little bit disappointing the last race, especially with how well Kimi was doing, as you had previously mentioned. So yeah, I really think that um the Alpha certainly, if not both the cars are in the points, certainly. One of the cars will be in the points next weekend around. And on to Haas, uh, Tywe, our next team. Well, um, yeah, I think we might as well just leave it at that because it's true. Absolutely, Tywe. Uh Next up, Toro Rosso now. Car-wise, I don't think we can really read too much into Toro Rosso because I don't really think this is the kind of track that's going to be great for them. Last year, they were surprising, actually. In how they, uh, in how they performed, and Pierre Gasly, of course, is returning to Toro Rosso. Well, you wouldn't think that, but he is, even though he was basically in a Toro Rosso. Um, he did do well last year in the Toro Rosso. I think he finished in P nine, which at the time, considering the power that the Honda had at the time, was quite good. So. If Gasly can somehow rediscover confidence and that type of form, then surely he can be, maybe not in the points, but, you know, in and around there. Maybe the back end of a points uh, finish, who knows. But Daniel Kvyat, simply, he has to beat Pierre Gasly at Spa. If Gasly is struggling with confidence and with his driving, then Kvyat needs to absolutely pound him into the dust. Um, if he wants to... Send a signal and a message to Red Bull that I'm absolutely keen to get that Red Bull seat. And I desperately, desperately want it. And hopefully for his sake, Albon uh, doesn't quite get to grips with the Red Bull car. But again, car-wise at Toro Rosso, they're not going to be that great. I would be honestly surprised if they got a point. But the thing to look out for absolutely is Gasly versus Kvyat. I think Kvyat will take it at Spa. Uh, but Gasly, it's going to be interesting to see how he picks himself up after the demotion, the deserved demotion, of course. Nib for Toro Rosso, and yeah, for Gasly and Kibiat, who do you think will do what? Do you think Gasly will pick up his form, and do you think Kibiat will, you know, be right there beating him? Well, it's really tough to say, isn't it? Of course, we'll uh, we'll get a better. Um, few of things from practice uh, next weekend at Spa, but ooh, that, that that really is a tough one. I think that one of the Toro Rosso lads will get a point. More than likely, Danny Kvyat, because he knows the car, he's familiar with the car. You know, he done all pre-season with it. He's done uh, 11 or 12 Grand Prix with it, and I, I'd expect him to beat Gasly at at, certainly at the moment, and of course we mentioned previously how how much of an important battle this is, because basically if Kvyat doesn't beat Gasly, um, you, you'd expect him to be staying in the Toro Rosso and for Albon um, to be keeping his seat at Red Bull. So Kvyat absolutely has to win this battle, and uh, at Spa I think he can get off to quite a strong start by beating uh, by beating Pierre. Yeah, he should do so, and I think most likely, if if a Toro Rosso uh, driver is going to finish in the points, it probably will be Daniel Kiriat. Now, the final team of the midfield is Racing Point. This lovely picture I've got on the screen is of uh, Racing Point, both Racing Points, trying to go 
the inside and the outside for a possible 1-2. That was a crazy, crazy start last year with the Racing Point cars. Um, but for this weekend, I think Racing Point will be back to how they were at Hockenheim. If you remember back to Hockenheim, of course, after their first round of upgrades where they've been, you know, progressively bringing the B-Spec car. Perez was in the top 10. Stroll was definitely improved from what he was before in terms of his qualifying and his race performances. So from a Racing Point point of view, I think they're probably going to be in that other position again. I think Perez will be probably P10, P11, somewhere around there. Stroll, probably P15, P16, but definitely for the race, I think Racing Point will finish in the points because Spa is a great racetrack for them. They've got great history here, and normally they are very, very good. Normally, they're actually the strongest midfield team at Spa. So if Racing Point don't score a point, no pun intended, I would be surprised because Perez also very good at this circuit. Stroll, we haven't really seen what he can do at Spa in Formula 1. Uh, but from a car perspective, Racing Point should be definitely a lot better than they were in Hungary. Nib for Racing Point. Um, is top 10 possible for them? No. I don't think it is. I think they'll be pretty close to uh, the points, but I ultimately don't think that they will. You know, in the past, this track has favoured them very, very much. So even way back when in 2009, where they... Um, did they win in 2009? Or did they get pole? I can't remember. They, they, uh, in 2009, uh, they did very well here. I was about to say, they got pole position and then Raikkonen and won the race with Kurz. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, they, uh, who was it? Was, was it Fisichella finished yeah. second? Yeah, Fisichella finished second for them. So, yeah, way back when, it's it's always been a very good track for Racing Point. But I don't think it will continue uh, this year round. Their car just isn't as good as what it's been in previous years. And that's the main reason why I don't think that they'll score points. So pretty logical reason there. Um, yeah, I hope... <laughs> uh, I don't think many people will be shocked with what I'm about to say. Hey, Lance Stroll, get out Q Q1. That that'll be good <laughs> if he does. If he does so, um, but yeah, I I think they'll, they'll just be outside the points, probably with the Toro Rossos and maybe with Giovinazzi. Um, so who knows? They could they couldn't they could end up sneaking a point, but uh, I think that there's other teams who are just slightly better than them at the moment who could uh who will probably get the points instead yeah i think i think definitely mclaren uh kimi raikin with alfa romeo i think it, you know if the mclarens don't have penalties i think those are three definitely for the points and then for p10 it's going to be a real big struggle between the renaults racing points toro rossos giovinazzi uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see, of course. And the last team who I don't consider yet to be in the midfield is Williams. Now, of course, uh, George Russell was was great at Hungary. It was one of the best performances of the season so far by Russell in that car around a track where Williams are not really ever that good. They're great by Russell, uh, but at Spa, I don't think he'll be as close to the midfield as he was at Hungary. I think he won't be too far off. Williams have definitely improved their car. You cannot have any doubts about that whatsoever. But I don't think they have enough of a car at this racetrack to be, you know, in that type of position. So, you know, hopefully Williams, they are closer than I say. And maybe they do beat a couple midfield runners. But most likely they're not going to be in that position. But... Before we go, we're going to predict our top three for qualifying and our top three for the Grand Prix at Spa next weekend. I'll go first. So top three in qualifying for me, it will be Lewis Hamilton on pole position because Lewis in qualifying at Spa, if you look at his history at Spa, normally in qualifying Lewis is very, very hard to beat. Um, and I think he'll be absolutely up for it and up for the fight against Ferrari in qualifying. Then in P2, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, mainly because the Ferrari will be very quick on the straights, uh, but I don't think he will have enough to beat Hamilton. 
with the car he does have, I think Hamilton will really pull out an absolute stonker of a lap at the end. And then in P3, I'm going to go for Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. Again, mainly because he's in the Ferrari, which I think will be very quick on the straights in qualifying. Then in the race, I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton to win. It will be close, though, in the race. I don't think he'll dominate the Grand Prix. He, he'll definitely have to look in his mirrors a few times. In P2, I think will be Sebastian Vettel, because if you look at Sebastian's race record at Spa, it's very, very good. He's always very good in the races at Spa. So I think Sebastian will definitely be on the podium at the very least. And then in P3... I'm going to go for Max Verstappen because I think he will capitalise on tyre wear issues for Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari, who I don't think he'll be as quick as Vettel because Vettel does tend to have a better race pace than Charles does because I think Sebastian looks after you know, his tyres better than Charles does. And I don't think, by the way, Valtteri Bottas will be that quick at Spa. So Max Verstappen will be in P3 and then in P4, probably Leclerc and then Bottas. And the rest of the field. Uh, Nib, what's your top three for qualifying in the race? For qualifying, I think on pole, I'm going to go with Charles Leclerc. Uh, I, I just think that Ferrari will be in qualifying the fastest team. And that's why in second place, I'm going to go with Sebastian Vettel. Uh, then in third place, uh, pro probably going to be Lewis Hamilton. Uh, then into the race... Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna say it. I think that uh, Charles Leclerc is gonna win the Grand Prix. I think that Ferrari will finally get their first win of the season. A very and uh, Charles uh, on his third attempt, where he could have very easily won, uh, of course, in Bahrain and at uh, and in Austria. I think on the third asking, I think he'll get it done. I think that Charles Leclerc will win the Grand Prix. Uh, followed by Lewis Hamilton. I think that Mercedes will be will be putting un, him under pressure um, for quite a few laps in that Grand Prix. Um, and then in third place, hmm, I'm going to go with Max Verstappen in third place. I think it's hard to not put him on the podium at the moment. He is uh, he is driving that well. So that that's why I'm going to go with uh, Verstappen in third. So yeah, I. I those are my predictions for the Belgium Grand Prix, and I'm certainly looking forward to it in, in uh, well, next week. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as long as we get Ferrari, Mercedes, and Max Verstappen, you know, close ish together, definitely for the race, I think we are in for another great race for sure. But, guys, that is it for the podcast today, previewing the Belgian Grand Prix. Let me know in the comment section, guys. What do you think will happen at Spa in qualifying in the race? Who do you think will be quick? Not so quick. What drivers do you think we'll have to look out for at the top and at the bottom or in the midfield? And yeah, who do you think will win the 2019 Belgian Grand Prix? Let me know in the comment section down below. But I just want to say again, thank you to Niblo for coming along. And the next time we'll be hearing from you on the channel will be the race watch along for Spa. And uh, yeah, definitely cannot wait for that. Yeah, indeed. I'm certainly looking forward to the Grand Prix to the Grand Prix in the whole weekend because we've made a couple of improvements to the channel which I'm sure that um will be well received so yeah I'm certainly looking forward to the uh, to the Grand Prix and the whole entire weekend for the uh for the Belgium Grand Prix yeah absolutely and uh yeah we do have a couple upgrades and uh yeah I, I think you guys will like them and it'll help things especially with the interaction uh in the comments or in the chat so yeah Looking forward to getting to that next week. But yeah, again, comment down below what you thought of this video and what you think will happen. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there. Or go to my homepage, subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Also, hit the like button if you want to see this content continue. Remember, we do podcast episodes basically once a week uh, between the races to preview the races or the next race coming up on the calendar as well. Don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description. That's the best place for notifications for my videos and live streams. And also, follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110. Check out my website, chazrhd.com. Also, check out my Facebook, 
uh, page. Uh, that's Chazra HDF1 on Facebook. And also, don't forget to view my latest video. Uh, it's in the description down below. It's a video to do with Daniel Ricciardo and Renault. And I think you guys will, uh, will definitely enjoy it if you have not seen it already. But guys, until the Belgian Grand Prix weekend and my next video, which is coming up on Monday, which is going to be a, definitely an interesting video for you guys. It has been me, Nazareth HD. Goodbye.